Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Hohan Hygiene Australia, to give me the opportunity to come and share the good work we do at Prince of Wales Hospital. I would like to correct, I haven't finished my thesis yet. I'm still in the process of getting my hair grey by completing my PhD. So yeah, I would like to acknowledge Hand Hygiene Australia definitely for the program we run um, at our hospital and also World Health Organization, especially the modern father of hand hygiene, Dr. Pidiria Piche, and uh, Ilavara Shalhaven Local Health District. That's where I conducted a qualitative research and also the Nursing Research and Education Department at uh, Prince of Wales Hospital, and also all the auditors from both districts and our exec um, at uh, Prince of Wales Hospital. So just to give you an overview, I'm sure you're all very familiar with Hand Hygiene Australia's program, the National Initiative, and which was endorsed by the Australian Commission, um, and also we practice that in every um, hospital and also in the other states and jurisdictions. So the aim of this program is to reduce the incidence of um, healthcare associated infections and also to increase the use of alcohol-based hand rub. So instead of just sticking with the traditional soap and water wash, um, we promote the alcohol-based <coughs> hand rub use. And all this initiative came from um, World Health Organization's program, Clean Care is Safe Care, which was launched in 2005. So the local implementation ward in our um, south eastern Sydney, Lavara, we have this Hand Hygiene Australia model, and uh, we train um, auditors, predominantly nurses. We have some uh, doctors and also allied health um, staff, but mostly the interest comes from nurses because you know that's very easy for us to talk to or get on board. But our ICU intensivist um, at the moment who is quite keen and he drives the program in ICU. Um, the infection prevention and control team, um, we got a huge role to play when it comes to running the program and we support the training and also uh, the support to the program. And um, as I said, nursing uh, research and education, our Nehru department and also Prince of Exec take a lot of interest into uh, meeting the KPI. So Prince of Wales Hospital, if you are not familiar with, uh, we almost 450 bed hospital, so we have to collect 2,450 moments, and mostly we sit around 3,800 to 4,500 moments. As you can see, 2015 to 2016 so far, we managed to collect 24,909. That's a lot of moments, I see. You know, it's a, it's a lot of hard work from auditors. So what we do, um, we get assistance from Hand Hygiene Australia to train gold standard auditors, and the gold standard auditors at our hospital train the general auditors. So this year, we managed to train 28 auditors, and at the moment, we got almost 75 valid auditors, but saying that the annual validation is a challenge. Um, I can't definitely say that all these 75 gone through um, annual validation. <coughs> so in average, you know, one auditor probably may collect around 3,300 to 350 or so moments. Yes, we do uh, promote the um, validation online training and also um, they have to collect 100 moments minimum per year to uh, keep their um, auditor um, in a certificate. Um, there were a few issues being identified um, from auditors' perspective, especially um, when we go around and speak to them. They told us that the challenges they face every day when they have to step up to audit their peers or colleagues or different healthcare group like medical team. And um, we, then we got the concerns over if we don't support them, there will be a bit of an issue with not sustaining the program, or it may prevent us from getting more auditors or running the program. So we decided to do a proper research. So in 2013, Ilavara Shalhaven, we conducted a qualitative research to just ask the auditor population what they face, what their challenges, how can we help them. So this uh, paper has been published in um, American Journal of Infection Control in 2015. So if you like to, you can go and have a look at to get a bit more understanding of what the auditors said to us. So what that research identified um, a lot of good things and also the challenges they face. 
So we asked them the purpose of auditing, what they think. So the auditor said to us that the auditing is for obtaining accurate data, that's for sure, and maintaining standard of care, um, being a patient advocate, and being role model on the wards when they do auditing. So the factors that enable the role allocated time. I'm sure everyone sitting here who engaged in this program will tell that the issues with time, not giving enough time for them to go out of their clinical duties and perform the auditing. And staff level mix, especially a lot of moments happens in healthcare. They may got junior staff or everyone senior or you know they don't have that equal mix so that they can be released from their clinical load. Education being came up as a huge barrier or an issue. And the word culture of promoting leadership, feedback and reflection, and peer support, understanding their role is really key. So a few good things they said. I'm not going to read. You can read the bubbles. Um, that's from their own words. So the factors, factor inhibit the role is lack of comprehensive education, poor understanding of auditor's role, uh, not being a link nurse. What that means is in Elavara Shalhaven, they have a strong infection control champion program, and some hand hygiene auditors are link nurses too, or link people too. So the link group get um, <coughs> seminars or frequent education sessions, monthly meeting, so they will have update information on everything happening in the infection control field. But if you are just an auditor, then you just get trained once that's it. You're off to um, collect moments, then after that you don't have a clue if there is any changes happening, is there hard work making any difference in the clinical outcome? Um, so that was a huge issue. So if you are both a, a link person and a hand hygiene auditor, so you have the benefit of being in that strong group. Uh, that's been highlighted many times in that um, talk or the focus group and then not having enough auditors around was another um, factor which inhibit their role. So the top barriers in their view, time constraints, as we already talked about, um, not having dedicated time from the clinical load, limited number of hand hygiene auditors, lack of understanding of the model, because mostly doctors unfortunately ask that where is the evidence. There are so many evidence out there, still it's very hard to convince that group that you know, we don't need to come up with the new evidence. Um, healthcare workers' last la lack of understanding of the model, all this auditing concept, normally they don't understand. Time lag in providing feedback to hand hygiene auditors' performance, because that time they didn't know that, you know, are they meeting the numbers which they need to um, collect as a KPI, or is that making any difference? Sometimes, what's the point? You know, I just collect all these moments, stand there, take all these, you know, uh, looks from other colleagues and peers, and is that making a difference? That was important for them to know. Um, and lack of recognition as another issue. And then the availability of hand hygiene product at the end of the bed, because if you see someone with the clipboard, or nowadays it's an iPad or um, you know, electronic device, the first thing they will ask, there is no hand hygiene product, so what are you auditing? So they think that that's the auditor's responsibility to go around and check the product first, then come and do the <coughs> auditing. So that's an excuse um, from the staff or healthcare workers to blame, like, you know, you go and fix something else, don't watch me, I don't like that. So from the auditor's perspective, uh, they do not receive sufficient ongoing education compared to the um, champions or link group. There is not a lot of access to clinical research or data to support the fact that this auditing actually works. It makes a difference. Um, lack of updated information on the role, why I'm doing this. Information on impact of improved hand hygiene causing a reduction in healthcare associated infection. And also increased education, and that's what they said, that if we get educated or give, get all this information, um, that you will benefit them to stand up against their other colleagues and tell them that, look, what I'm doing, I'm watching upon you, it makes a difference. So they wanted to have that empowerment and the confidence in their role. 
And as an auditor, my personally, I'm an auditor too. And you know that people slam the door or draw the curtain, and you know. Um, and we used to use pink alcohol rub. So unfortunately, they you know give you titles like you know that pink bitch coming. You know, sorry for the <laughs> language. Um, you know, and just you know, can't you just have a placard to say that you know you are the hand hygiene auditor? You don't have to be there. Your face cut in a cardboard should do the job. You know. So yeah. It, sometimes it's very hard um, for you know just an auditor. It's a bit too much for them to take. Um, so they said to us that we need more arm to step up and you know talk to the people who, especially, are the professional group. That's a challenge. And sometimes this behaviour can be a bit bullying, and that affects their relationship with the other colleagues. You know, if you are an auditor, I don't want to work with you that shift because you will be watching on me. It's in order to have a program. What we learned by doing the auditing and also talking to the auditors that you have to have the commitment to sustain the program. You need to have the support from the peers, the management, and also the infection control team. You need to give feedback and also training and education. So at Prince of Wales Hospital, I moved from the district where I did the um, research, now I work for a different district, so I think they get the benefit of um, that research anyway. So we have governance and leadership in our hospital. We train more auditors. This year we train 20% of <coughs> ICU staff. So having more auditors means you have a lot of choices if someone is on leave or they can't be released from the clinical load. Um, otherwise, if you only train one auditor per ward, if they on leave, you know, you, you, you will struggle to get the moments done. And we have pro formal educations now. We um, meet every now and then, I can't tell you exactly how often, but informally we meet, we do catch-ups and discussions with your hand hygiene auditors. We give them the feedback, we send them electronic notifications on how many moments they collected, are they meeting the target or not, if they're meeting it, just ask them that, you know, do you need any help if it's not. And meetings to discuss the improvement strategies, because unfortunately, some wards look up to the auditors if their compliance drop. That's their fault. Why can't you just, you know, put it up to 80 or 90? Uh, so that's not the case. You know, they just observe what they are um, watching and they just document what they are um, coming across with. So if their compliance rate drops, we step up and help them to ask if there's anything we can do to educate the staff. And we do give incentives because chocolates definitely works. Um, certificates, you know, sugar is really good to keep up the good spirit. And ongoing support uh, from the company, like, you know, that problem of not having the product at the end of the bed. Luckily, the product we use, the manufacturer support us to replace the product. So every month or, you know, every couple of weeks, they come and replace all the broken um, brackets. So if there is no product available, they will be able to help us with. So that problem is also being sorted. It's working well, actually. So on the wards, the num the nurse unit manager is responsible for to make sure that they meet the KPI, key performance indicator, and they inform the auditors or the um, ward that be up to this number and we need to get that many more. And we have leadership teams on the ward, which includes clinical nurse consultants, um, clinical nurse specialists or nurse educators, and they are responsible for ensuring that they have enough auditors on the board. If someone is planning on leave, they are an auditor, so they will come up with a backup plan. And the leadership team also responsible for notifying the rest of the staff that, you know, look, you need to release the um, other staff member who's the auditor to perform their auditing so that we can meet the numbers, whatever they need. Um, so we have a structure of the director of nursing and we have program core co directors underneath. So they are the ones who are responsible for mentioning that the NUMS meet the KPI. So the program directors be notified regularly from infection control um, to stating that are they boards meeting the target or not. So medical, surgical, acute care all been divided into different, different programs. So we can approach uh, a medical direct program, say stating that, look, this ward's not meeting the numbers this time around, or what can we do to help you? Um, hand hygiene has been discussed in all our exec meetings now, especially the Infection Prevention and Control Committee take a lot of interest into 
um, this KPI. So how to maintain the enthusiasm? As already just told us that education is the key. They need to get more and more education, especially on the latest research, what's happening out in the infection control world. Uh, for example, multidrug resistant organisms, if they know that that will help them to have that conversation with the doctors or allied health, um, stating that, look, this is what is happening and the hand hygiene definitely works. It's really important for us to observe what are you doing and if you need any help, we're here to assist you. So education is the key. Infection control team, we do take the ownership of notification of auditing cycle, like when it starts, when it's stopped, it finishes, and we send email reminders to the program director so that they can staff up to release the auditor for collection of the moments. And correlation and distribution of the um, moments or the results uh, for the public boards, we do that. And we do support the nurse um, research education department when they run the auditor training programs. We uh, participate in the education. Um, and also we provide with posters, videos, and glitter book. Whenever there is a, a compliance issue with any ward, we go up and then you know, help the ward to um, educate. So this is just a snapshot of the reminders we send out. Every now and then we um, send this out stating that where you're sitting, you need to have 50 more or 100 more moments to collect to meet that KPI. So these are the flyers we send out for the training. We run four to five minimum um, sessions in a year to train auditors. If there is a need, like for ICU, we run a separate program for ICU to train the ICU um, nurses. Um, and this has been, this date's been set um, the beginning of the year. So they know that you know in March or um, May or what, whenever the next auditor training session is coming up, so they can plan well ahead. Also, we ask the um, auditors <coughs> after the training that what worked and what would you like to see more. And according to their feedback, we modify the session so they may need to run a bit more practical sessions, or you know we go up to the ward and support them. So ongoing support from the Infection Prevention and Control Committee is um, really important and we recognize those words they've done well and if someone didn't do well, um, we will step up and support them to, to ask them. We give um, feedback on low compliance and infection control then organize some education sessions for them and if they did well, again, as I said, um, sugar definitely works. We send out certificate and chocolates to them, you know, to bribe. Again, I'm not saying that it's all um, plus plus. Yes, we have challenges too. Annual auditor validation is a challenge, uh, getting them on board and you know, um, going through that 100 moments and the certificate. We are a metropolitan hospital sitting in the middle of the city. Staff retention is always a challenge because <coughs> people like to move around. So that's uh, uh, another issue. Leave cover, especially um, for an uh, outbreak situation like influenza or gastro winter season. Uh, we always get stressed out, you know, to meet the numbers. And dedicated auditor time still uh, an issue. After having all these programs uh, support set up, sometimes we do have uh, wards they don't meet the numbers. So we have a back a few backup auditors. Actually, we send them around if that's the case. So in a nutshell, we have to have organizational support, the ward level support team definitely needs to be get involved and the person itself needs to be committed and motivated and we need to support them. So yeah, believe in yourself, <laughs> you make a difference. Thank you.